Imagine being able to drag a single material from your Keyshot library onto a model and automatically applying every color, material, and finish the part comes in all at one time. And this is exactly why multi-materials exist in Keyshot. So today I'm gonna to show you how to make them, save them, use them, and improve your workflow. Let's go. To follow along, visit willgibbons.com, enter the file vault, and download the guitar pedal project files. There's a lot of ways to use multi-materials, but let's begin by making one. After opening the guitar pedal demo file, Alt, left click to hide everything except for the middle piece of the guitar pedal. We'll start by turning this diffuse material into a plastic material. To get a more realistic powder coat finish, open the material graph, right click the blank area and choose texture, then noise texture, and connect it to the bump socket. Scale the texture down and reduce the bump height a little bit until it looks right. Add a tiny bit of roughness to avoid a mirror-like finish. Currently, we have a bump texture node, a surface node, and a material node. These three connected nodes represent a single material. To convert them to a multi-material, we'll click the Create Multi-Material button. This converts the existing material into a submaterial, and it becomes the first and only item in the submaterial list. Let's rename the submaterial to something a little more descriptive. Then we'll rename the multi-material in the upper left of the material graph ribbon. Looking to the left of the submaterial list, we see three icons. Because I want my new submaterial to have the same bump texture as my existing submaterial, I'll choose the Duplicate Material and Link Textures option. A new submaterial appears in my list and some new nodes are added to the material graph. To make the material graph less confusing, I'll click the Align Nodes to Work Area button. To further simplify matters, you can click the Show Only Active Material button. This hides all submaterials that are not active in the submaterial list. I'll rename the new submaterial and change its color by double clicking the root node and adjusting its diffuse color. While you can repeat this step as many times as you need, for this example, I'll create one more color variant following the same exact steps. Let's close the material graph for a minute and look at how our multi-material appears in the project panel's material tab. You see the same list of submaterials, and you can activate them by clicking on them one at a time. Press Shift B on the keyboard to cycle through all of them. Now that you know how to create a multi-material, let's look at a more complex example that I prepared earlier on. I'll activate the other model set, and here you'll notice I have a multi-material that contains three color variations. I'll open the material graph for the material on the middle piece and see how it's built. You'll notice the powder coated paint finish uses the same texture node across all three sub-materials, reducing the number of bump textures needed to create that effect. If I were to edit a property of that bump texture, then all three sub-materials will receive the same change, which can be a time saver. This multi-material also contains two labels that are identical on each submaterial. The WG logo and the input-output label appears the same on each submaterial variation. So multi-materials allow us to reuse labels on each submaterial as opposed to having different copies of the same exact label. This drastically simplifies the material graph, and imagine if you need to update one of those labels. It cuts down on the amount of work or labels that you'll have to replace. Finally, this multi-material contains three labels that are unique. After creating the three submaterial color variations, the unique labels were added in the real-time view one at a time with the desired submaterial active. The result is a material graph that uses as few nodes as possible while allowing us to apply a collection of appearances to a model by simply applying a single multi-material. To supercharge your Keyshot skills today, download the free rendering roadmap at willgibbons.com roadmap. If you've ever wondered what the easiest things you can do to make the biggest improvements in your renderings, then download the guide. Links are in the description below. All right, so let's return to our basic multi-material we started making earlier on by activating the demo model set. Now we'll save our multi-material. Once each submaterial is named appropriately and the multi-material itself has been given a name, Select the folder in your Keyshot library you wish to save your new multi-material to. I recommend you create a new custom folder if you haven't done so already. To do this, in the library panel, collapse the root folder called Materials. With it selected, click the Add Folder button. Give it a name like Custom Materials and click OK. Then expand your materials list once again and you should see the new folder in the list. Now it may not be alphabetically ordered until you restart Keyshot. 
Next, navigate to the Project Panels Material tab and click the floppy disk icon to the right of the Material Name field. Make sure the correct folder is selected and choose your preferred thumbnail style and click OK. You should see a new thumbnail appear with a blue ribbon that has three white arrows on it. This indicates that it's a multi-material. Then when you want to apply it to another part, just drag it from the library onto the part you wish to apply it to. Now, let's say you want to show off your sub-materials on a row of identical products. We'll create a pattern of our product by selecting it in the scene tree. Right-click on it and choose Make Pattern. Dial in the settings until you're happy with how the pattern looks and then choose OK. By default, the pattern tool in Keyshot unlinks all materials. This means that you should now have a copy of the multi-material on each product. I'll go ahead and activate a different submaterial for each petal. This gives us the freedom to activate a different submaterial on each product. So if we check out the inseam materials list, we should now see three colorful multi-material icons, meaning we have three unlinked multi-materials. If you see more than this, you may need to filter by visibility by clicking the funnel icon in the lower right hand corner. Now, if we link these multi-materials, then whatever submaterial is activated, that'll be visible across all the models that the multi-material is actually applied to. I'll multi-select the multi-materials and link them. We should now see all models show the same active submaterial. And when we activate a different submaterial, it's shown across all linked multi-materials within the scene. Now, what do we do if we want to create different color combinations on models with multiple parts and multiple multi-materials? We need to use studios to achieve this. For creating multiple levels of dependency, you have to rely on the configurator, which is a tool that we're not gonna be covering today. First off, I'll hide all other models except for the one I wish to render and create a new camera and position it accordingly. To save time, I'll apply the outer shell material that I created earlier on and save to my library. Next, press U on the keyboard to open up the Studios panel and click the Add Studio button. Then navigate down below the Studios list to select the properties. Check the camera box and make sure the camera we just created is active. Next, make sure to assign the current model set called Demo to this studio. Check the box for multi-materials and select the first multi-material you wish to configure. I'll choose the multi-material for the center of the pedal and from the submaterial list, activate the variant that I want to show in this studio. Then just repeat this process to set which submaterials will be active within this studio. Finally, I will repeat this process as many times as I need to in order to create each color combination for each studio. Once I've finished configuring all the studios, I can use the render queue to add the studios to the queue. To render, I'll just press process queue and Keyshot will process all the studios sequentially, giving me an image for each studio. And until next time, happy rendering.